<sighs> a lot of bad people in the world doing really bad things, isn't there? <laughs> sucks. Um, uh, really sucks. Um, well, it's obvious uh, Jesus isn't a god. Uh, well, because, you know, I remember when we read the parable of Juan and Jesus, you know, uh, and um, Juan explains to Jesus that, you know, no, because right, you can't deny perfection, okay, if it's without flaw and it's this and that, and that. If he was perfect, everybody would have accepted him as God because he had taken human form and then changed the entire world and made it in his image, okay. And so he's not God. Because if God becomes human form and comes and lives among us and teaches us how to be like him, it's you can't resist perfection. You can't. Uh, it's it's perfect. You can't resist that. Once you oh, you know, it's it's so uh, it's no, nah, it's just it's just two and two is four. So he's obviously not a god, he's teaching us how to worship God and that uh we're given free will to accept the glory of God and be faithful to an eternal existence, worshiping God, or we can reject that and then, you know, literally obliterate our physical existence or constantly put it at risk. And then Dr. Who can save us and all that horrible, stupid crap they have on TV. We're going to save the universe. So the Lazarus project. We're going to save the world. And it's like save the world from what? What are you saving the world from? Life is eternal and grace is infinite. So if, you know, uh, planet Earth blows up, does God cease to exist? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, it's uh, Stephen Hawking said, um, uh, God's omnipotent and omnipotent. If you worship God, that's that's your, your uh, perspective, okay? Your perception and your lasting influence, okay? If that's not your perspective and your perception, then your lasting influence is bullshit. It's Doctor Who. It's the Lazarus Project. It's uh, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse. Spider-Man No Way Home. You know, it's complete bullshit. Right? It's complete, you know, a lot of the stuff, okay, like cults that call themselves religion and reinvent the teachings of Jesus Christ or Muhammad into their perspective and their perception and their influence sucks because they're mass murderers, right? And they're home. Most people today, okay, believe in a cult based on people that use money and home invasion through technology to maintain their political and social status, right? That, that, that's obvious, right? So most people today that call themselves religious, okay, believe in money and technology that maintain class warfare and social status through debt and trespass and violence, sex, cult, tribalism, behaviors, right? We, everybody in their right mind is like, yeah, that's pretty much most cults that call themselves religious. That's why I hate religion from a lot of these people. It's like, well, because you, you feel like their cult is kicking your cult ass. Okay. Yeah, because I was getting certain things, you know, scientific, you know, you enter you enter a face and you feel the scientific studies and stuff like that. And, you know, you get certain people that, yeah, I, and I've said this constantly, and, and I know it's true, that homosexuality is a reaction to people doing things um, in a very wrong way in the result of holy covenants or marriage. Okay, it's a, it's a violent reaction to not want to sexually reproduce because we're not living the way we should in a in a mature existence, you know, a Job, Jonah, Jesus type, Muhammad, mature existence, perfect. And the word perfect in Hebrew applies to Job and as the same way it does to Jesus. And to Jesus is the same way it does to Job. Okay. You can't take a meaning of the word and make it fit your perspective and perception to manipulate the fact that we're not living the influence of Solomon, right? So you, you got to understand that it's linguistics. And so, and then you get these people where well, the Bush people don't have, yeah, the Bush people in Africa, okay, do not have a large homosexual propensity in their genetics, which possibly means that they were very uh, tribal, secular, and so very small. And they most likely, if they had homosexuals, killed them off like a lot of Native Americans did. Okay. You understand? Okay. Some cultures kill off their homosexuals. Some cultures don't. 
Okay. So it's, it's very likely given the primitive conditions and the tight knit social conditions that for thousands of years, they killed off their homosexuals. They found out they were homosexual, be they female or be they male, they killed them. Okay. Do you understand that's, that's most likely the case of the Bush people in Africa? The gods must be crazy. Uh, it's not that they didn't have a propensity. It's just that if they had homosexuals, it was considered like an abomination to their perspective, perspective and their perception. And so the influence didn't carry on homosexuality because they most likely, if they were gay, would kill them. Okay. Yeah, they like, they like, like a lot of, you know, survival of the fittest cults. You know, if you have somebody like Stephen Hawking, it's a devil or a demon, and you go take it out on a rock and let the wolves eat it and you kill it. Okay. Because it means you've been demon possessed. Not the fact that, so that people were jealous of this person and abused them while they were pregnant and put them in toxic conditions while they were pregnant or put something in their food while they were pregnant and the baby comes out with horrific uh, birth defects and then it's, she's the devil, she gave spawn to the devil, she's Rosemary's, she's Rosemary and that's her baby. You know, you, you guys, you know, manipulation, manipulated relationships don't work, right? And, you know, my boy, Algie, deep in Laria's side of LeBron's heart is envy and jealousy. And what sets you apart is if you seek the remedy, right? And so when you can understand how not to be envious and jealous of other people, and like Judas, Chris Murdy said to those kids at Rishi Valley, you know, tell your teacher, don't compare. You know, don't compete. Don't compare. Don't be more clever than your brother. Don't be more sexually desirable than your sister. Okay. And so, um, you know, when someone is superiorly intelligent than you that means his influence transcends your perspective or your your perception okay so no matter what you're doing with ai and creating alternate universes to fuck with people's heads you know um you are going to lose this contest after y2k before it even started uh your science projects were off um when you finally took me to um, Cochise County, Arizona, and had all your scientists kind of encounter me. It's like, oh, dude, we should have talked. We should have talked back way back, you know, when I was at ASU, when you guys were watching me rearrange uh, the cosmos through the stupidity of Alan Greenspan's economics, right? Come on now, seriously. And so, you know, anybody in their right minds would have been able to um, observe and analyze and watch Parsons with uh, econ academic exchange during his time at uh, Mesa Community College and, and Arizona State University and then just radically change himself, especially after all the, the Pentagon um, cult sexual abuse and stuff that he went through while he was, you know, his whole life. <laughs> his, my whole life, literally my whole life. Because um, uh, when you have a virtual presence, okay, of people studying you, and you're supposed to, according to the religious culture, you're supposed to be this perfect person that's holier than thou, and they're full of shit. <laughs> you don't invade on someone's house and give him absolutely no privacy, and then say he's a pervert. It's like you're the main influence of my sexual uh, understanding because you're in my private life, you're watching to see how I masturbate, who I find sexually attractive, how I find them sexually attractive, how I'm going to act to women I'm sexually attracted to, how I'm going to behave with, you know, and when you look back at my, um, you know, Mr. Ponce, this kid's going to do it. <laughs> this kid can do it. He, he can, he can navigate through the worst hell and the worst people in the world and correct himself and get through terrible situations. And that was with the, the dog, Daniel, when I was a little kid. And uh, we already know about that story. And, um, uh, you know, so he, he, you know, people that, are, you know, have faith and just, we just got to rely on faith thing. You know, this is, we're going to put him, this kid through the worst hell ever. And he's going to get through it without giving in to the devil and Satan. And he's going to help us live the commands of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, I'm, I can see why people believe in me. And why people have faith in God because of me, like Ron used to say, my Chiricahua friend, you make me think that I could believe that I could believe in new son, the one God again. You don't believe you have faith in new son, the one God. You believe in your ancestors, Cochise, who maintain faith in God. Okay, It's just a linguistics error that, you know, we had a lot of problems with at first because of the bad science projects, not because of me. I've been doing everything right. They do stuff wrong. Just forgive debt and trespass, love one eternal faithful peace. As soon as they revealed themselves to me, that's what I said they should do. So I'm correct and they're incorrect. That's why we're still doing things incorrectly is because of them, not me. Okay, it's two and two is four. Okay, guys, I love you.